Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokis Mystery. This will be part 416, and we're continuing with our lesson titled Fourth Empire Dominion. This will be part 2. Scripture indicates the Fourth Empire will be dominated by Satan who will be responsible for the destruction of the whole Adamic order. The, um, the period from the beginning of sorrows mm -hmm. until the rapture, basically Satan will be the centerpiece and everything will revolve around him. He will continue to dominate until the second half of the tribulation period where he will be eclipsed by the beast. Mm -hmm. We want to see some of his activities as it relates to the time just ahead. Isaiah 14, verses 15 to 17. He will be solely responsible for the destruction, leading the destruction of the Adamic order. <clears throat> Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Now the inference is that this will be done as a result of the pronunciation of the Lord in judging the inhabitants of the earth. In other words, scripture indicates God will turn it all over into the hand of Satan to <coughs> bring about the judgment. Jeremiah 25, verse 30. Therefore I prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout, as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. So the inference of scripture is that included into the commands and judgments is going to be the instruction that enables Lucifer to have authority to run rampant over the human race. Notice what it says in verse 31. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He shall plead. That word plead there means <coughs> he will judge. With all flesh he will give them that are wicked to the sword. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. This whirlwind, this noise, is a release of demonic intelligences to fan over the earth and incite the human race upon itself. At that point, nation rises against nation, kingdom against kingdom the human race will be incited to self-destruction. Uh, basically, the system of governments and armies are going to be incited for self-destruction. At that point, do we see the Luciferians also taking up some Christians, um, uncommitted, into the heavens, into the work camps? Not yet. When does that start? That happens later on. Um, We'll touch on that tonight. That's uh, basically inferring uh, the time that uh, the 
the communities are reaching the end of their time. Okay, so just before the rapture. Yes. So, it says we're hearing the noise. Mm -hmm. Will we also be seeing the demons? Sure. Sure. Um, Jeremiah 25, verse 26. All the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, we see in citation, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, in citation, and the king of Shishak, the individual that's doing the in citation, shall drink after them. He's going to be released freed to totally be the instrument of judgment on the Adamic order and everything that pertains to it. Which brings us to the next principle. So Brother Jones, yes. Satan's going to be released upon the humans. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be given full reign to do as he will? Or is he going to be governed? Well, within a certain perspective. Not uh, entirely. That won't happen until after the rapture. But he's going to be allowed to um, destroy um, unmercifully the human order. Like never before. You've seen the next part of scripture, the slain of the Lord shall be one end of the earth to the other. He's going to run riot over the human race. Uh, and um, that's part of God's judgment. The Lord judges each individual. Each individual is going to be caught up in a snare. And the people that are caught up in that snare are going to go down to destruction at the hand. Lucifer is just the executioner mm. who's finally been given what he wanted to do all the time. Now, <clears throat> Revelation 12, verse 13, he's going to be the instrument to release the fourth empire. Did you say verse 13? 12 to 13. Yes, Revelation 12, mm -hmm. verse 13. Verse 13. Actually, it looks like verse 3. Verse 3, yeah. Okay. We'll just move to verse 13 later on. See if we get time. Revelation 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. We know who the red dragon is having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. So he has jurisdiction over the fourth empire. Uh, he starts off dominating the fourth empire. First half, he will have dominion over the first, the first half of the tribulation period. Second half of the tribulation period, of course, it's going to be a reversal. But we see the seven heads are, are under his jurisdiction, <laughs> his influence. Now, what we want to take a look at is the first thing that he will do, he's going to be the lead in establishing estates on the earth. The ancient uh, kingdoms of the Fourth Empire are going to come back. Hyperborea, Polaria, Atlantis, Lemuria, all the old uh, hidden and destroyed regions are going to be restored under him. He is going to <clears throat> be the cutting edge 
of, in other words, he's going to take the lion's share of the provinces for himself. Are all those regions that you've just mentioned actually active in the subterranean region right now? No. Okay. So when you say they will come back, help us to understand what that means. Well, some of them aren't even in the subterranean region. Okay. Hyperborea and Polaria are in the north and the south. Oh, okay. It's frozen over, so mm. they're not operating now, but that's going to change. Yes. So, he is in charge of this. Not now. When it happens, he's in charge. Okay, so now, so, as it was, it will be restored to where it will, again, be under his control. Okay, cause well, they're actually under his influence, because you have kings. It's not going to be a federation. It's going to be a confederation. In other words, he doesn't have total dominion, because these are people before the fall that were given estates by God. Okay. And but he influences. Okay, so the, the point I'm trying to get to, Mr. Jones, is just like uh, the beast when he's released after the, you know takes out the, the Antichrist and the beast arises with power, gets more power, so so it's going to be the same, similar to kings that are controlling these areas, or is it all going to be Satan? No, the kings have their own power. But the influence of Lucifer is so powerful mm. that they are going to agree, basically, with the thrust, the direction that he's taking everything. Remember what we said last night, he's going to restore the, the mercantile system. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're going to fall in line. It's the way it was before his fall. He dominated everything, but he didn't control everything. He influenced to the point where people would fall in line uh, because of the great influence. But he can't go into a competitor state and say, you do this, you do that. The beast will, but not Satan. He's not that mm. powerful. Then that's a good question. Should we understand that the most dangerous of the church communities is the one at Pergamos? Dangerous meaning if somebody is not vigilant, off with their head very quickly. Yeah, we're going to see what happens okay. there. That's going to be the center point for Luciferian activities, mm. Pergamos. And we'll see why. <clears throat> um, scripture indicates Satan will be in the lead of those kings released, setting up his headquarters in the region of Pergamos. Revelation 2nd chapter 12 to 13. Pergamos, since it's the center of Satan's headquarters, I mean the center of activity for mm. the uh, Fourth Empire. And that's a per currently the region over what? Turkey. Turkey. It's in Turkey. <clears throat> Revelation 2, <clears throat> verse 12 to 13. To the angel of the church at Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. That's all I want. Satan's seat. Now this is very important to look at Satan's seat because this is going to be the center of activity <coughs> both into and after the uh, rapture. Case in point, Satan's seat is the region where he's going to give over to the Antichrist, Revelation 13. Verse 2. <clears throat> and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet is the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. This is the Antichrist. Now, turn to Ezekiel 28.
verse 1 to 2. This, play, this takes place right after the scripture we have read. It's referring to the Antichrist who now is given to Satan's seat and his authority and his power. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, the heart of the city. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, that thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. Satan has given him his seat. Which goes all the way back to Revelation, the second chapter, and Pergamos. <clears throat> I sit in the seat of God. This is how Satan's going to present himself in tribulation period. I mean, in the uh, period of the beginning of sorrows. He's coming as a God to be worshipped. In the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. So we see who he is. He's a mortal. He's going to be killed. But he's been given such power, it makes him delirious <laughs> with uh, self-aggrandizement. And he's used it to uh, aggrandize the people around him. The city's wealthy. They've learned the art of um, <clears throat> sorcery, incantations. They're dominating the rest of the world in a whole shot. This is giving you a picture basically nearing the end of the tribulation period. Now, giving you just some preliminary stuff. More focus on Satan's seat. Principle. Scripture indicates Satan will have his own religion <clears throat> patterned after Israel's religion. The difference being Instead of the worship of YHVH, they will worship him. Revelation 3, verse Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now I pondered this for quite a while. Why, why is this happening here? Why are they saying they're Jews and the Lord is saying they're not? Who, who are these? Then it came to me today. They're tears. Turn to John, the Gospel of John, the eighth chapter. Starting in verse 37, <clears throat> we're going to see how this develops through the church of Satan. Jesus talking to the scribes and Pharisees of his time. I know you're Abraham's seed, Jews, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you, your tares. I speak that which I have seen with my father, you do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto him, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, and man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. They said unto him, We be not born of fornication. 
we have one Father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. They're programmed. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. This is the church of Satan. Mm. The only difference between this and Revelation, the third chapter, is that they are going to switch their comprehension from what they perceive to be YHVH directly to their true father, Satan. You know that um, gathering at Bohemian Grove in this country by the various leaders? That looks like a template for exactly what you're saying. Yeah, well, it's patterned after uh, the satanic religion. Uh, what's going to happen, the Church of Satan is going to be the number one religion dominating everything else. Mm -hmm. They're claiming they're going to be the true Israelite. And that's why they're in the communities trying to garner influence in the communities. And <clears throat> they're going to wind up later on persecuting the very church. So that makes them really today's scribes and Pharisees. Sure. Because that's Sure. Sure. But what it is, what you're seeing here is going to be translated to exactly what's going to happen at the time of the beginning of Psalms. These guys are going to come out of the woodwork, proclaim their religion. Satan is going to be worshipped by everybody and um, imposes religion on everybody until us this is going to continue the apostasy until the coming of the beast who shuts it all down. Mm. So I imagine, that, I imagine that um, they will openly perform human sacrifice. Oh, sure. <laughs> from the beginning of sorrow. Sure. Well, not from the beginning of sorrow. Okay. When do you think we'll see that open? After the rapture. Okay. And well, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Going back now to Pergamos, Satan Sea. So we, we, we can see how this, this region... It's going to be the influence for everything else that takes place in the Luciferian Fourth Empire. Mm -hmm. He's calling the shots. He's influencing everything. Now, remember what we said in our lesson last night. Um, um, Satan's thrust, main thrust, is to reestablish his mercantile system. Yes. He's got a problem, though. Now... <clears throat> Let's visit the next principle. Scripture indicates although the Luciferians dominate the earth, Satan is still limited in his region because of the committed saints at Pergamos. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, verse seven. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. <clears throat> Satan's going to be released. He's going to be given to the nth degree greater authority than he already has. He's going to wipe out the human race, establish the fourth empire, but he's still going to have a limitation. This is the limitation. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, restraineth, will let until he is taken out of the way. Satan cannot dominate totally everything until the restrainer is removed. Okay. 
So that's the limitation. He's got a restrainer in his own headquarters region, Pergamos. Yeah, he's been able to infiltrate. He's been able to <clears throat> have a following in Pergamos, but you have the individual saint that's standing firm, committed, waiting for the rapture. Satan cannot overcome that. Overcome right. that. Okay. So, until after the rapture, then Satan can do this. Yeah, thing. then he'll sweep over everything <clears throat> like a tidal wave. Now, I want, to note, I want you to note something. There's two restrictions. Two restrictions. Notice what it says. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 2, 7. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. <coughs> Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then, and then, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, destroy with the brightness of his coming. The beast can't make his appearance either until the restrainer is removed. Okay. That's one restriction. There's another restriction. Before the beast makes his appearance, there's another that's restrained that has to be released. Turn to Isaiah It shall come to pass in that day that Tyre, Harlot City, mm. shall be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years shall Tyre sing as a harlot. Drop down to verse 17. It shall come to pass after the end of seventy years that the Lord will visit Tyre, and she shall turn to her hire and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. Tyre is going to be limited, uh, basically neutralized, until a certain point. The point is after the restrainer is taken away. So during the time of the communities, there'll be no harlot city. You're going to have the kings of the earth under Lucifer reestablished a mercantile system. We just read it. When she is finally released, she's going to come and commit fornication in a mercantile system that's already active and viable. I thought, and perhaps I've got this wrong, that the 70-year period ended at the beginning of Soros. Uh... In a way, it does, but not completely. Okay. Meaning there will still be some level of... The hardest city is not going to be allowed to, to surface and flourish until after the rapture because the restrainer is still here. Satan is going to be busy reconstituting his mercantile system with all the other Luciferian kings and kingdoms but Pergamos, which is going to be the capital of the harlot city, mm -hmm. cannot function because you've got the communities here and the restrainers right. here. He can't do it. But the harlot city, I understand, still continues to function in the subterranean regions. It, yeah, very, very limited. Okay. Very limited. They can't go beyond a certain limitation because of the restrainer. Right. Uh, so what will happen by the time of the rapture, the kingdoms will be in a 
basically have brought the mercantile system to a point where it's functioning. <clears throat> After the rapture, the Harlot City will be allowed, just said the Lord will visit Tiger, the Harlot City will be allowed to totally flourish on the surface and under Satan, Satan is the one that's going to develop the Harlot City because that's the in his province. He's the, matter of fact, he's the guy that founded the Harlot City. He's going to take the Harlot City and he's going to make it dominate over everything else. Then he's going to take his buddy, the Antichrist, and make him vice regent over the Harlot City, give him his power because he wants to ascend into the heavens and restock, reestablish his mercantile system in the heavens and ultimately connect the two which he won't be able to do that, but he's going to be allowed to start it. I can take you back to your <coughs> two restrictions. Okay. You mentioned the beast mm -hmm. being one of those being restricted. And you said that's because the restrainer has yet to be removed from the planet. According but, to Second Thessalonians. Agreed. But that removal happens at the rapture. Mm -hmm. And it's the first restriction which is in play at that point being Shishak. Yes, but you know what Paul, notice what Paul says. He says, until he be taken away, then shall that man okay, of affliction okay. be. And he's not giving a time period. Sure. He's saying that the restriction is released now. He's ultimately going to come in, but it'll probably be a period of 30 years before he does right. make his appearance. Because we've got to have Shishak finish and then, okay. Mm -hmm. But evil will reach its maximum. There's no restriction there uh, at all. So the Harlot City is going to be allowed to flourish and, 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 and dominate everything <clears throat> with its mercantile system. And um, Satan is going to be so pleased with it, he will just want to extend it to the heavens. Mm. So yesterday, I'm trying to remember the verse, mm -hmm. the enemy infiltrates the pre-church community groups the leaders, the Protodicus leaders, have bought into, um, what do you call it, doctrines of devils and so on and so forth. Not the Protodicus, well, <clears throat> not the Protodicus leaders, the leaders are the angels in heaven. I know what you're talking about. The, but this is the pre- The apostles, and, huh? This is pre the church, church communities. This is before the church communities. Oh, okay. So this is, this is the beginning of sorrows yeah. up until the gathering. Okay, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, you where, know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, that person or that's the, before the, they get to the community before they get to the community exactly that's what i should have said so the person's leading the group before they get to the communities there will be political members involved in, in that yes, of course yes the teachers that's the same person who allows antipas to be killed or actually does the killing of antipas when they get to the church communities no they won't get to the church communities because the people that allow the luciferian to influence <coughs> prior to the communities are going to come under judgment. Okay. So then the ones who does allow the killing of Antipas, are they influenced by Jezebel? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. This is a new crop. A new, new crop. Crop, a new crop. Yes. Okay. It's a consistent repetition. You have people who are sincere. Mm -hmm. A certain segment becomes corrupted. You get into a new movement. Everybody's sincere. A certain segment gets corrupted. Right. That's always been that way. Because human nature doesn't change. Sure. So when you were talking about the percentages being you know, falling off, they're huge. Yes. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage. That makes a rest. Turn to Revelation 7. Verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, 
palms in their hands. Now drop down to same chapter. Verse 14, chapter 14. Verse 14. I mean verse 14, excuse me. Chapter 7, verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. He said to me, These, the one we just read, read about the great multitude no man could number, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is the church community. Right. Great. The majority of the church communities is not going to make sure. the rapture. That, that is the majority. Right? That is the majority. They're going to be left behind. They have spotted robes. Why? Because they've yielded to the temptation that's entered into the communities. Right. Only a remnant have stood firm. Like Antipas. <clears throat> uh, that's the restrainer. Mm -hmm. That's why if... if Everybody was like this. Satan would sweep over the communities in a hot minute sure, because there's no opposition. So you, you get a picture of this, it's just of what you have now. You you take organized religion. You take the ones that are going to come out of the world and ultimately become the elder group. There's multitudes of them. Well, by the time they get to the communities, that number is going to be tremendously reduced. Sure. Then in the communities, by the time of the rapture, that number is going to be tremendously reduced. So you have a remnant that the scripture says is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. So if our robe has a spot or a wrinkle, well, we won't be there. We'll be in the heavens. Praise but Lord. those that are on in the communities, <coughs> if their robe's got a Tiny pinhead, you, you, you're not going. Simple as that. Now, uh, Isaiah 23 13, and we'll be closing with this about the Harlot City. Behold the land of the Chaldeans. Now, originally the Chaldeans were the Babylonians. The Chaldeans were the priest class in ancient Babylon. These were the guys that um, were the uh, wise men, the astrologers, the sorcerers. It, that constituted that priest class called the Chaldeans. Behold the land of the Chaldeans. This people was not Till the Assyrian, another name for Satan, founded it for them that dwell in the wilderness. So it's talking about the harlot city was founded during a time of judgment, Luciferian era, that came on the sorcerers at that time uh, would uh, their their society. Everything else was came under a judgment, wiped them out, neutralized them. After a certain time, Lucifer came and reestablished, founded the harlot city. It says, Behold, the land of the Chaldeans, this people was not till the Assyrian founded it for them that dwell in the wilderness. They set up the towers thereof, they raised up the palaces thereof, and he brought it to ruin. So it's talking about the harlot city, which is called the mother of abominations and detestations. It was founded by Lucifer. The Chaldeans, it's the city of the Chaldeans, a sorcerer city. They embellished it. They made it a working concern. They uh, did all their, their stuff in it to the time in which it was neutralized. After that point, it's going to rise again, dominate the earth 
until it's destroyed. The he that's referring to is the beast, or the ten kings as a group. But the Lord himself is the one behind it that will ultimately destroy the harlot city. So the he that brings it to ruin is the beast. Uh, no, the he that d d destroys it, the beast is going to be involved as a result of its being destroyed, okay. but the he that's referred that to destroying is, is the Lord. Right, okay. But he's using the beast to destroy it, is what you're saying. Okay. Yes. So you have this interwoven plan of the Father. This is ultimately what's going to happen. The thing is going, going to go down to destruction after a protracted period in which it's allowed to flourish. And as it is allowed to flourish, it's going to reap tremendous, uh, egregious torment on Christians. Turn to Revelation 12 chapter. Just before we turn to Revelation 12 chapter. Mm -hmm. Where did you say we find this land of the Chaldeans? Babylon. Today's Babylon. Yesterday's Babylon, the Nebuchadnezzar. That Babylon, okay. Yeah. Those are the ones that made Babylon great. Right. The sorcerers and all the rest of that. Revelation 18. So we're not going to Revelation 12. We're going to Revelation 18. 18. Starting in verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. This is Prototokos, making a proclamation from heaven. This is the first half of the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. She's being destroyed. For sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. So talking about this is the time that God's judgment is going to fall on the harlot city. This is the time the ten kings are going to be allowed to come forth wipe her out, give their power to the beast, and proceed the second okay. half of the tribulation period. So that's Isaiah 23, 13. Mm -hmm. So when the Father, when, when I'm saying he, it's meaning the, 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 the brothers. Well, he refers to God, the Father, who destroys the Harlot City through the Ten Kings. Okay. Matter of fact, Revelation 17 tells you that. Uh, Verse 12. Ten kings which thou sawest, the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom yet. Revelation 17, 12. But receive power as kings one hour with the beast. They have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest were, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God, talking about the Father, mm -hmm. for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be so it's all part of the Father's plan. Lucifer founded the harlot city, built it up, made it great. The Chaldeans ran the harlot city, sorcerer city. Ultimately, he destroyed it. The he is referring to the Father who uses the ten kings to wipe her out and continue with the second half of the tribulation period. 
I'm thinking about her, the the description of her. Mm -hmm. She's riding a beast. She's yeah. a female riding a beast, and mm -hmm. she's because for a time she has power over. Remember, the beast symbolizes the ten kings and the beast that ultimately is going to destroy her. But for a time, when she's in power, the beast cannot make his appearance until a certain point. So they take advantage of that. Use the beast for their... Remember, there's a kingdom on the surface, the kingdom is sub subterranean, which the heart of the city is also dominated. <coughs> the beast, the ten kings, re resent that. Ultimately, they look for an opportunity to get even, <laughs> which happens. God engineers all this in the background. When they get the opportunity, they wipe her out. And then, they, of course, they take control of everything and they run the show for a while. Okay, now, we know it's God using them to wipe her out. Does he just know their hearts and put in their hearts? Now is the time. That's what yeah. he said. 